Hi, I'm Chris Oldland. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Field Service News, and I'm reporting here from the Future of Connected Field Service Conference, which is hosted by IFS. And I'm joined by Jonas Granath, who is the Chief Commercial Officer and Deputy CEO from Polygon. Jonas, really good to speak to you, and thanks for a great presentation a little bit earlier on today. What I'd like to do is just try and pull out some of those real key points from what was a very insightful session. Um, but to begin, could you just give us a little bit of background for the guys at home, tell us who Polygon are, Sure. Uh, Polygon is a global expert in property damage control. We help people in need when damage strikes. So we work predominantly with water and fire damage restorations. So we are a man or woman in the van business with 3,500 field technicians who are always on site, always by your side to help our customers in need. Okay. Um, and we, you've been talking today about the, the journey that you guys have been on, which has been quite a, 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 a very... Uh, successful journey so far, although one that you're still going through, uh, moving from being part of the Munters organization um, to the service organization, being a standalone unit, moving from transactional nature um, to a much more focused on service and world-class services, I think you described it. Can you just tell us a little bit about that journey? Yes, that has been a very important and rewarding journey. We used to focus a lot on equipment, machines, and think mm. that is the most important thing. And it is also very important, but by only focusing on that, we could easily become a commodity. So today, we focus always on a combination of people, technology, and knowledge, and we put our people first. So to be able to provide world-class services, we need to have motivated people, and we need to have good tools. And uh, I think we have accomplished that today. I was, I was very interested when you referenced your mission statement. By your side, is it? Correct me if I've got that wrong. Our brand promise is always by your side. Always by your side. And it is very important to us, and it's not always easy to deliver on. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it is this type of business that people have a water damage once in 50 years, mm. so maybe once in a lifetime. And it's a make or break situation, a moment of truth. Yes. If we do a good job, it's good for Polygon, for the insurance company that we work for, and most importantly for the policyholder. So then they would be happy and recommend us. Mm. However, if we don't do a good job, they will tell all their friends yes. uh, about it. So we really have to be always by your side because people are so vulnerable when they have damage. So we need to be on site, deliver on our promises, and most importantly, act with a lot of empathy. Well, yes, empathy is probably the word that really resonates there because most what your engineers and your guys in the field are doing is very, very technical, you know, using a lot of equipment that's very specialized. Of course, they're dealing with people that are facing catastrophe. Um, how important are people in your organization? Very important. Like you said, the people who have a damage, they are in emotional distress. Yeah. So we have to take care of that. It's very important not to forget about the customer. Yeah. Um, so um, I cannot say how, how important it is, but it's the number one asset we are looking for with our people. And I'm very proud to work for a company with 3,500 people mm. who work that way and put empathy first. What I thought was very, very impressive, what really stood out for me from your session this morning was yourself, you know, um, part of the C-suite, a leader of the organization. You mentioned that you still go out and spend time with the engineers, but once a month you mentioned. W why do you do that? You know, um, why, why aren't you sitting in the, the big corner office in the ivory tower? Why do you take the time to actually spend time with the engineers and see how their, their work is going? It is crucial and it is in fact the only way in a people's business to smell yeah. what's going on yeah. and to get the feedback from our people, what they need. And my job, we talk about staff supports the line in mm. Polygon. So my job as a representative of the headquarter is to make sure that the people get the tools they need. Mm. And the only way I can find out what they need is to meet them. Okay. One of the things you've been talking about a lot today, um, as we mentioned at the top, is this journey. And of course, any kind of digital digitalization, you know, Uberization, these buzz phrases, but any digital journey, um, especially when you guys have gone from a transactional nature to a service-centric, customer-centric nature, um, it's a big change management piece, isn't it? Um, there was something that you said which I thought was quite a brave thing to say, where you, you, you questioned whether these decisions should be democracy or not. Can you expand on that point a little bit? Yes, it is a sensitive topic. I am aware of that. Mm. But when we implemented our IT system, uh, in a decentralized service organization like this, we have different people, different countries, different mm. customers. If we would try to please all needs and satisfy everyone, it would never work. Yeah. We would build a too complex system. On the other hand, if we would have done it only from the ivory tower in the headquarter, mm. it would also not have worked. So 
it is important to listen, uh, but to also be able to find the consensus in all the feedback we get. And uh, in such a journey, you have to make some tough decisions and you cannot please everyone. You, you referenced as well, um, to, to kind of extend that point, um, you can't take feedback from everybody, but you can't sit in your ivory tower as you beautifully put it. Um, how do you select the kind of the representatives of the, the field workforce or the, the dispatch teams? You can't get every voice. You've got three and a half thousand people working in the organization. How do you select who's right? Is it a cultural thing that you look for in them? Are you looking for people that are perhaps naysayers? Or are you looking for people that are very forward looking and are on board with the, the vision of the future? Yes, it is a combination of factor. I would mm. say most important, it's about attitude. We need to appoint people who are solution-oriented, yeah. people who like changes, people who are also open for compromises. But it's also very important to have people who have the strategic thinking, who can be helicopter pilots yes. to see the big picture, but on the other hand, who can also operate the submarines and okay, yeah, yeah. go deep into the bottom of yes, the ocean yes. and find all the details, because the devil is in the detail. Yeah. And difficult to find those people, but I'm proud that we did in our company. Mm. And those couple of people who were the change ambassadors helped me and yeah. my whole team to do the right priorities. And I could never have done that by myself. And that was a key success factor in this journey. Okay. And let's have a look at the, um, the actual uh, the, the technical side of things in terms of you've implemented a number of pieces for IFS. I think it was Applications 9 on the finance side, the mobile workforce piece, the field service management piece. Um, what have been the benefits that you've seen um, from, from kind of implementing the field service management sector, for, which is the piece that my audience, the service directors, are going to be very keen to hear about. We see many benefits for end customers, for our paying customers like insurers and property managers, and also for, for ourselves. And I would say the biggest benefits have been for our people. We are now 2 to 3% more productive. And even more importantly, people can do what they want and like. Mm. They love to be out helping people in need to be always by your side. They don't like yeah. too much sitting in the office yes. doing administrating tasks. Mm. And with the system, it's possible for our people to do everything on the field. Mm. They follow the process step by step with the mobile. At the end, the system automatically generates a report to the customer. And that's fantastic. It's, it's allowing engineers to do what they signed up for, which is be engineers, not be administrators. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's a good way of putting it. And, and one final question, Jonas. Um, What's the next steps? You, we, we touched on this a little bit in the presentation. Um, like, you say, like we said, we, you've gone from a very traditional uh, manufacturer uh, transactional relationship to a very customer-centric, very service-focused, we'll focus on delivering world-class services. How do you extend beyond that? How do you get greater share of uh, your, your clients' wallets, especially in a chain like yourselves where you're working as uh, you've got a number of different customers, haven't you? You've got the insurers, then you've got the end users. What's, what's the next steps for Polygon? During the last four years, we worked very hard to build the foundation with the right structure and culture in our company, the right organization. And we also got a lot of support from IFS to implement the FSM system. Mm. So now we have the foundation and the field service management system from IFS. It's the heart of our business. But now we are adding on different components to that an integration engine called Polyflow, an app called Spark, and also an Internet of Things solution as well. So that is the way to be even closer to the end customer. And that's where the real exciting journey starts. So we are traditionally a B2B company, but with our new technology and our new innovation, we will be able to have a direct relationship also to the end customers. And I find that really exciting. Excellent. Jonas, thank you ever so much for taking the time to speak to us. And uh, good luck with that, that vision of the future. I'm sure you'll achieve it. Thank you very much. Thank you.